Hi friends, in the previous videos we were discussing about the obstetrical emergencies. Here we are going to see about another obstetrical emergency that is Vasa Previa. Vasa Previa means when the fetal blood vessels lies over the os in front of the presenting part. If the fetal blood vessels are lying in front of the presenting part, that condition is Vasa Previa. Here you just see the picture. This is the presenting part and this is the fetal blood vessel. Here the placenta is attached here and from the placenta the blood vessels are going to the baby and these blood vessels are lying in front of the presenting part and this is the internal os and it is above the internal os of the cervix and this condition is known as the vasa previa. Blood vessels are lying in front of the presenting part. The causes for the vasa previa includes velamentous insertion of the umbilical cord and saxon rate lobe of placenta. Velamentous insertion of the umbilical cord means usually the umbilical cord, this is the umbilical cord here and this is the placenta, this round structure is a placenta. The cord will be attached to the center, it will be attached directly over here, it should be somewhere here. But here, instead of getting attached at the center of the placenta, it is attached to the membranes. These are the fetal membranes. That is amnion and chorion. Here the placenta is attached to the membranes. You can see in the picture. If it is attached to the membranes, when this placenta is lying in the lower segment, these membranes may come in front of the presenting part. That is if the placenta is attached on this side of the uterus and if the umbilical cord, if the baby is lying here, the umbilical cord will be moving like, like this. And if the baby is coming here, of course, these vessels will be in front of the presenting part. So, velamentous insertion of the cord means the umbilical cord is attached to the membranes of the placenta, not directly to the placenta. And next condition is saxon rate lobe of placenta. There are 20 lobes in the placenta. Here, totally 20 lobes will be there. In saxonate lobe of placenta, what will happen means all the 19 lobes may be here. All the lobes will be to the as like normal placenta. But one or two lobes, sometimes one lobe, may be located away from the placenta. Somewhere here or somewhere here, wherever it is. If it is located away from the placenta, a few blood vessels will be moving to that lobe also and that lobe or that type of placenta is known as saxon rate placenta and that lobe is known as the saxon rate lobe and when the blood vessels are passing to the saxon rate lobe those vessels also may come in front of the presenting part so these are the main reasons for the vasa previa next we can see how how can you diagnose the vasa previa on the pervagenal examination if the membranes are intact if the amnion and chorion are intact, if the membranes are not ruptured, you will be able to feel the pulsation. You can feel a pulse when you are doing the palpation. And painless vaginal bleeding is there. Means in that case also you should suspect the vasa previa. In speculum examination, you will be able to visualize the blood vessels. And fetal bradycardia also will be there. Because whenever the baby is coming down, the fetal head will be compressing these blood vessels. So naturally blood supply to the baby will decrease and that may produce the bradycardia. And usually the vaginal bleeding you can expect in the case of separation of the placenta or in the case of placenta previa in such cases. In separation of placenta, patient will be having pain. But here the patient won't be having the pain. Without pain, bleeding will be there. So these are the things you can use for diagnosing the placenta previa. Next, let us see the management of placenta previa. In the case of placenta previa, remember, you are not supposed to do the pervagenal examination, especially if the membranes are ruptured. If you are doing the pervagenal examination, when the membranes are ruptured, it may damage the blood vessels and that may produce bleeding. And next one, if the pregnancy is after 37 weeks and if the lady is getting recurrent bleeding, you can go for the elective delivery. You can induce a labor. Usually we won't go for the normal delivery. You can go for the cesarean. Continuously you have to monitor the fetal condition. So when, because when the fetal head is coming down, 
uh, when the uterus is contracting there is a chance for fetal bradycardia and it is better to always for the safety of the mother and for the baby you will be doing the cesarean section and uh, after the delivery if the baby is compromised you should start blood transfusion for the baby so thank you for watching this video soon we will be meeting with the next video about next obstetrical emergency thank you